Okay, um, thanks a lot for the, the invite to come over here and talk. Um, as you've probably heard, of, I've been to Galway a couple of times. Um, probably <laughs> more times I've been in Watford recently. Um, so, yeah, we've worked with RPS for quite a few years, developing systems, trying to push, push the agenda. I'm not here today to talk about sort of BRE's commercial stuff, but a prod, sort of another part of what I do um, in terms of BRE BIM team has their commercial side, training, certification, but we're also involved in um, transforming construction and the Construction Innovation Hub project in the UK. So I'm really talking about that side of it and really how we're, we're trying to set the agenda of where we need to, to move on this. Um, you've all seen the, the, these diagrams before. There's construction at the bottom of the pile in terms of where they are. All the other disciplines are well ahead in terms of what's going on there. Um, there's reports after report after report from the UK going back to the 1900s Blossom reaching for the sky in the 30s. You know, all these saying about how bad construction is in the UK. And we, 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 we then went to 2025, which then built on the report, the, the 2011 report that Mark talked about. And we've moved from 20% savings in design and construction to 30% lower costs across life cycle. And there's been other presentations here today about the impact of life cycle and how do we get where we really need to get to on, on these things. Um, and, and, and a big pressure in the UK is obviously the, the, the fallout from the Grenville disaster and the Hackett report and the impact that that is having. And it's not just the UK, um, around the world, you know, th that is echoing in terms of they all think th those sorts of issues could apply there. So we really need to change the way that we develop stuff. And Hackett talks about BIM as the golden thread, and there's this perception that BIM is going to resolve all these problems and it does it all, but actually the reality is some, somewhat different. And it doesn't mean that it's not possible, but we just need to start looking and thinking about the way we need to change things. So within the UK, the UK industrial strategy set out by government talks about these four main areas in terms of clean growth, healthy ageing, future mobility, AI and data economy. And transforming construction was one of the things that came out of the clean growth area. And for years we've been saying we need more investment within construction. And finally, when the UK government forgot a minute about Brexit, they put this thing about the construction sector deal up. And they put their money where their mouth is, in terms of they put 170 million aside, requesting that industry produce 250 million matched funding. And they set three main areas in terms of 72 million for a construction innovation hub, 36 for an active building centre, and then various other research and developments um, being pushed out through Innovate UK. So from that, the Construction Innovation Hub was set out, which is the, basically, the mission is basically to be catalysts for transfer, <laughs> transforming the UK construction sector. And there are three main partners within that in terms of the Manufacturing Technology Centre, who within the UK worked with the likes of Rolls-Royce, Land Rover, really looking at changing the whole way manufacturing worked. You've got the Centre for Digital Britain in Cambridge and the BRE. And they are the, the, the three partners that basically hold this project together. And they all bring different skill sets to that, and they all have different things that they're working on. Um, and amongst all the different projects that are going on, digital product data and building regs is one of the areas that develops out of the work that my team have been doing in terms of research we've been carrying out for the last five years. So it came from the RegBIM project and from other projects we developed in terms of lexicon into template and that in terms of how we deal with the whole product data area. And as part of that project, we set out our two sets of processes and the things that we need to do. 
And these are just the high-level process maps. Okay, they get far more complex from that. Um, and I've got a new, new technical lead come in, and um, we're trying to explain <laughs> to him the sort of the thinking behind three years of developing these things. Um, but the reality is, it's not simple. Okay. Now, if we go back to this whole perception of the golden thread, this perception that basically designers present information, there's a critique of it, there's some analysis simulation, and then we move forward and it's all resolved. But throughout the process, there are multiple steps. So you might decide off with some conceptual design, then move into design, then technical design, then to construction, and then as built. And through that, we've got the traditional passing, the, the Kobe stuff that Bill talked about early on, but really how do we pass information from design and construction into the people who maintain, operate, and if we look at the whole life cycle benefits, the whole life cycle approach. And it's this perception that there's this golden thread carrying through it, and that resolves all of our problems. Done and dusted, we can move on. If only it was that easy. So many of you might be aware of things like Industry Foundation classes, IFC, which is supposed to be the data standard that's used for BIM. So again, something like a door, you'll have an IFC common property set and a fire rating with one of those properties. So we can carry that property throughout the whole life cycle. Except for one person puts it down as 30 minutes. An architect's a bit more technical, so they talk about it as an FD30. Main contractor might just say it's a half hour, and then the people who are operating it have other requirements. So actually, the way we record the data, the way we do things, is completely different. So the difference is, actually, we have different fire ratings. We have fire ratings relating to the requirements. We have fire ratings relating to the specification, to the construction, to the maintenance and the operation. And actually, all of those are different things. So if we're going to deal with this golden thread, we need to capture all these different things so we can actually define what we're doing, how that impacts on the other things. So does the product data meet the original requirements and the specification? So if that product on that door needs to change some point when they're doing maintenance operations on it, can they still meet all those requirements or set into it? Now the whole perception was that BIM and these BIM objects were resolve all that. We've got the symbology, we've got the graphics, We've got the non-graphical data and it's all there. So we can set up BIM object websites and, and deal with all that stuff there. But we've got to remember that as well as the object, there are all the different instances of it. That that object will sit in lots of multiple different locations. And associated with that, you'll get type-based information as well as the instance information. And the effect of a particular location will then pull in to the requirements of the data associated with it. And then we, when we talk about a door as, as a product, well, the door is an assembly of lots and lots of different things. So we've got to look at the whole ontology of this. So the door opening, the frame, the architrave, all the different ironmongeries, the panels, one panel, two panels. There's data sets associated to the manufacturers, to what the installers does, health and safety, other specific, you know, cost, all, all these other product data sets that need to exist, EPDs, that are associated with things. So when we look at the product data, we're, we're talking about a collection relating to ontologies of all this stuff we need to manage and collate. And, yeah, there's been plenty of talk about digital twins. So we've got the physical objects, and then we need a digital representation of those. But when we've, the, the language that we use on the physical objects, um, when we start to moving in to properties, suddenly they become really important how we start dealing with those things. So how we talk about fire rating relating to one object, and then actually we need to start setting that down to the whole assemblies of different things which come together to make the fire rating 
for the whole. And plenty of talk about software, but even the basics within software like, such as Revit, that you might get fire rating provided by one uh, bin provider, and actually that has a different GUID to the other one. And they provide a different data type and a different list of possible answers to that. And then somebody uses lowercase and actually in Revit attributes are case sensitive or parameters are case sensitive, and then somebody else puts a space into it. So suddenly you've got four different fire rating captures. So how does that carry through this whole life cycle golden thread approach? So we need, you know, we have SEN, ISO, BRE, LPCB data sets associated with the physical objects and we need to start standardising those so we apply them in structured data into the digital twins of those objects. And we need to look at the data structures, the types, the measurements. We need this good quality data because that is what is missing from this whole process. And, and it's all about this, it's about removing waste. Because if we can start making much more efficient decisions based on good information, you know, the industry can start to move forwards. And I mentioned about <coughs> the impacts of instances and locations. So building rates. Okay, different ratings relating to different things. So as an architect, I design a space, we're going to put sprinklers into it. Okay, something then happens and there's a change. Sprinklers are now being removed. My doors have been specified and put in. And the spaces still have the old requirements, which no longer comply with the building rigs that I need. We get a change of use. It changes from an office to a storage area. Again, the requirement has changed. So the impact of that requirement on the products needs to be taken into account. So how do we start dealing with all these different linked data sets in a way to resolve this problem? And we need to be able to know that when if we do an impact on the room space, how that then feeds in to all the other product data associated with it. Even basic things like installation, that you know, traditionally, doors go in, we get sound tested, and then we might get things like um, they change the carpet fitting. So suddenly, we need to take five millimetres off the bottom of that door. No problem, because the manufacturer says you can take six mil off top and bottom, and it still meets the, the requirements. But then we get a scenario where we increase the size of the carpet and they come in and they take another six mil off that door. So the instance of that door in that location no longer meets the fire rating properties and is no longer certified in that location. So how do we manage this whole data flow throughout the whole process? And how do we make sure that we don't solve those problems? So we need to be aware of the requirements, not just the objects we're dealing with, but the spaces, the specification, the product data, and the people carrying out the maintenance and the operations, how they can start to deal with all these different things. So we can actually get to the point of proper data handover of information so the people are going to operate and maintain it. So when they come to carry out the work, they actually not just understand understand that Kobe said there was a fire rating for that product, but why the performance and the other specifications led to the application of that. So there's a bit of work to do on those. So the other part of the work that we're looking at is regulation checking. And if we take that regulation that we talked about, we've got to convert that into basic computer functions. So we can have a standardised parameter against the room, looking at use, looking at building language requirements of office, storage or corridor. But each of the objects then has things like, does it have sprinklers or not? 
to basically comply with those requirements. And then we can then start looking at the measurement requirements of those. So we start turning these into programs that we can start test and verifying. And then we can get to this point where actually we're getting much better information from the models. We're getting the whole requirements, the specification, all the other things, the product data, the instance information, the installation requirements. So when things are changing, we can make decisions based on data and data we can trust as opposed to a piece of paper that's been handed over at the end of a job. So we've got a bit of work to do, okay, and we're working through that. There's also an open call as part of the CIH for industry to get involved working with us. And one of the things they're looking at is what they call platform architecture. So basically, um, solutions to problems that are being put out there in terms of offset manufacturing type techniques, standardised design techniques, resolving particular problems on those. So there's an open call from the Construction Innovation Hub, and you can find that within the website. Um, there's platform design open call um, is the link to it. It's UK-based companies, okay, but there are sort of partnering options for other people from Ireland who, who can link with other UK companies to get involved on those. Um, it's far more information on the Transforming uh, the Construction Innovation Hub website. So thank you very much for listening. Hope you found out more about the, the problems we're trying to resolve. And we will be having solutions to this stuff. It's not just about identifying what the problems. All that stuff I've identified on product resource performance that we're looking at how we can collate those and we can resolve those issues. Thank you.